This is Bazaar Morning Call. Broadcasting live from the CNBC TV 18 Motilal Oswal Studios in Mumbai. Good morning. You're with us here on a fresh new edition of Bazaar Morning Call. It's a Wednesday morning, middle of the week. It's uh, once again a rainy Mumbai morning. I'm Prashant. With me, my colleague Surubi and Nigel. Guys, hi, morning. Good morning. Good morning, good morning uh, Nigel. Good morning, Prashant. I can tell you, I am one former Delhiite who never minds the Mumbai rains. Always good to wake up to some green and some fitter pattern. It's, it's a difficult thing to sort of get yourself to work. That's a separate point. But uh, no complaints. Although I have to say that I'm starting to miss the sun. Yes. It's been, what, uh, a month now? We've yeah, not had uh, the sun out and, you know, so, yeah. Absolutely. I think Non-stop. the rain's given a bit of a break here in Mumbai. I'd be a little bit happy. You know, a couple of days, take it off, take it easy, guys, and come back for more. It, uh, yeah, absolutely. Some sunshine. But, well, qu- let's quickly run you through what you need to know. It's a packed morning. I mean, I can tell you that. I can assure that it's uh, very, very packed over the next two and a half hours or so. Uh, so, yesterday, we had the market, the Nifty, that is, which hit an important level of 19,620 and then bounced. Now, this is the level that we put out uh, day, yesterday, uh, day before yesterday, and, I mean, last week on Friday as well, 19,620. I'll come back to this level. But, you know, the point I'm making is that we hit an important uh, support zone, and then there was a sharp bounce higher. All right, let's get to the U.S., and I'll come back to levels here. Uh, the the relentless move, up move in the U.S. market continues. Uh, the Nasdaq was up another 0.6%. The S&P was up strongly. For the Dow, it's been the 12th straight session of gains. And you've got to go back a long time to go back and uh, look at those kind of records for the Dow. Now, the point is, uh, you know, it, it, markets are unfazed. Even as it's most likely, as market pricing indicates, that the Fed will announce a 25 basis point rate hike tonight. And it's very unlikely that the Fed will clearly signal in the press conference, the Fed chair in the press conference will signal that, well, this is it. This is the last one and we are done now. It's not, it's not going to happen. I mean, you know, it may be true in hindsight, but we won't know it today after the Fed hike. But in the face of this, uh, in what is uh, in terms of in, in the parlance of market pricing is a certain rate hike and the market seems to be a pretty unfazed. The dollar index has uh, moved up just a, a tad bit, 101.34 as compared to yesterday. Brent, are, uh, Brent, the Brent price, oil price is also up about 0.7. By the way, WTI prices are back above the 200-day moving average. So there is some kind of uh, structural strength coming back into the, uh, uh, into the into oil prices once again. Both you need lower, not higher, uh, for emerging markets, India specifically. Now, the bounce from, and I come back to the levels here, the bounce from the low yesterday, which actually was 19.617. The level we put out was 19.620. So we almost touched that. Uh, begs the question if the sideways move is complete. Now, 19,620 is the 61.8% retracement of the recent rise that we had. And uh, that is the reason why this becomes important. Uh, the, you know, in, in, in normal circumstances, I would say uh, that uh, perhaps, yes, the sideways move is complete. But, I mean, I would say that uh, I'd like to see maybe a, a day or two more of uh, price action simply because the rise had been so fast and, uh, you know, we've come a long way. And it's just been, what, four days of slightly sideways kind of price action. But you should be open to the idea that uh, this is how the market will behave. Uh, you know, a breathless kind of up moves, four to five days of sideways move, and then one more leg higher. If that is not the case, on further downsides, the 20-day moving average for the Nifty comes in at 19,472 as of yesterday's close. For the bank Nifty, it never got to the 61.8% retracement of its own advance. It only touched the 38% retracement, uh, and that was 45,674, and then bounced. I mean, actually, it was slightly, uh, it, it broke the 38% by a little bit, and then it uh, saw a bounce as well. Uh, on further downsides, the 61.8% retracement will come into play. That is only at 45,244. This is the level we put out yesterday as well. And if the bank Nifty is to, is to head higher, First, it must take out the recent high of 46,370. I mean, all these numbers are just 2 3% away. So we'll find out pretty soon what the market wants to do. Yesterday was a very quiet session. The GIF Nifty will come up on your screen. I think uh, I would say, I mean, wait it out. Wait and watch a little bit. Maybe a do- day, two days. In any case, it's not going to miss much because uh, what's going to be the dominating driver tomorrow morning is what the Fed does and says later tonight. Surabhi. 
Uh, Prashant, I, I completely take your point. I mean, I think uh, 25 basis points rate hike is a given. Yeah. Uh, and by the way, it's not just the Fed. We have the BOE, uh, we have the ECB, we have the BOJ as well. So a fair amount of central bank action is widely anticipated. Uh, the futures are telling us that, you know, the probability is as high as 98% in terms of getting that 25 basis points rate hike. But here's the thing. Uh, the Indian indices are slightly behind some of the U.S. counterparts in the run-up to the event. That's just the last five days. The divergence is not too much. I mean, the Nifty is down about 0.8%. If you look at the Dow, it's actually up 0.7% thereabouts. So it's not much, but a minor difference here and there. So the question is, uh, because the fact that the Fed rarely disappoints markets and it re rarely shocks markets, uh, would you want to go in with absolutely proper long positioning into the event, uh, at least in sync with uh, some of the global counterparts in terms of the index action? So could then today traders here in India uh, use this as an opportunity to align themselves with a positive outcome from the Fed? That's, that's one thing that perhaps could support the index. Uh, the other thing, of course, are flows. We had positive FII numbers coming in yesterday, almost 1,100 crores worth of buying. By the way, buying in the last three months have been, has been robust. Uh, you're talking 43,000 crores in May, about 47 uh, in June, July. So far, we're already at 42,000 crores, the final figures that I'm talking about. So the buying from the FPI community continues to be very, very robust. Now, the next thing is earnings, and that picture continues to be muddled and mixed as we go along. And you'll hear a lot more of that over the next two hours or so. Now, JLR, very quickly to run you through, it's a very strong beat uh, for Tata Motors. But the, the larger conversation today is going to be this cancellation of the Tata Motors DVR. LNT, fantastic strong show on revenues and order bookings. But again, will the market have a bit of a hangover with the margins? Because there we had a miss once again. Though, of course, it's a buyback announcement. So that could support the, the stock. Uh, lots happening. SEAT, fantastic numbers. SBI Life has been a bit of a disappointment on the VNB front. Today is such a packed day. I thought I'd just uh, throw up today's calendar. I mean, and it's a huge one. Axis Bank, Bajaj Finance, Tata Consumer. Tech Mahindra, BPCL, just look at that list. I'm already breathless taking all of those names. And finally, some positive news on the macros. Uh, the IMF yesterday decided to lift India's growth forecast slightly, 20 basis points. They're saying the investment cycle is picking up. So that was always uh, nice to hear. But Nigel, I guess uh, it's really been so earnings driven, right? And I mean, today's calendar itself, I'm already tired looking at the number of companies and the huge big boys that are reporting today. Well, indeed, the earnings <laughs> season out here is well and truly on. But, you know, the big event today is going to be the Fed. And the hope is that the Federal Reserve doesn't come out with any kind of negative surprise. Yeah. So that's the hope from an equity market perspective. The problem is the dollar index as well as crude oil prices, they have moved unfavorably from an emerging market like India. Because the dollar index has moved to around 101.4, while we have crude oil prices as well at around $83.00. Per barrel. The Nasdaq, that was relative outperformer overnight among the three big uh, indices out there. Can it have some kind of rub off effect on the IT index? Well, we'll see because Microsoft in post hours was down while Apple was hired in post hours. So let's see how, how that one goes. Now, the problem for the Nifty is on a day to day basis, we're making lower lows. You know, just look at the last few days. Lower lows is what we have seen, which is not a great uh, sign from, a, from if someone is uh, having a bullish view on the index. What do the FIs do, though? Some sanity coming about. There are some short positions that are coming in there. And the long position from nearly 80%, that's come down to around 66% odd because the number of shots that have been added and some unwinding of long positions. And currently, the net long positions have come down to around 80,000 contracts. Remember, we were telling you, when it goes to around 1 lakh contracts odd, that's when you see some selling. And that's happened two or three times just in the last one month or so. So that's good news, actually. Some shots in the system, the bulls will like that. On the call writing side, the 19,700 call, very active yesterday, close around 20 lakh shares added there. Premium roughly was around 65 rupees, 80 rupees if you look at it, uh, you know, for the entire day on the whole. Now, the Nifty PCR is not varying, you know, it's at around 0.81 approximately. But what's telling you that the bears, they believe that they're very confident, is the PCR at only the 19,700 strike. That's at around 0.66. More calls written than the number of puts, and that's why that ratio is skewed in favor of uh, the call writers. Well, uh, support levels. Yesterday, we went closer around the 19,600 odds, so that's a crucial support. For the Nifty Bank as well, went around 45,600. In the near term, that's a support zone. On the upside, there is resistance at around 19,780 because of the call writing we've seen at around 19,700 approximately. And if we break that 19,600, then all eyes are on the 20 DMA. Interesting times. Let's see how it goes 
ahead of the Fed event. But I think you want to be a little bit nimble. You don't want to go all in ahead of this big event. I think nimble is a word. And I think that's the kind of market we are in. So let's get started with the equity call of the day. Alexander Redman of CLSA says, U.S. equities are as sizzling hot as the North American summer. They anticipate the concentrated performance with tech or internet names to begin cooling. CLSA's composite tactical indicator based on positioning, sentiment, technical, economic flow metrics is the most positive since January 4, 2022. Valuations once more appear stretched. Margins are vulnerable to further compression. Credit impulse is declining. Surveys remain indicative of GDP contraction and growth in retail spending is slowing down. He warns of a crueler summer of price action and a 10% reversal feels appropriate. So that's a cautious call from CLSA this morning. All right, well, let's get you some money market views as well. Kunal Sudani of Shinnan Bank says the looming central bank decisions along with growth and inflation updates trigger caution. He says Fed policy due, to, uh, due today and a 25 basis point hike is priced in. Focus will be on whatever policymakers plan for the near future. Adds deteriorating German business conference. Adds to the bearish outlook for the Eurozone. For the USD INR, Kunal says... 81.7 is a support and 82.1 is a resistance. On bonds, Neeraj Gambhir of Access Bank says the 10-year benchmark bond traded in a range of 7.05 to 7.11% last week. He says yields gradually moved higher on the back of China, taking measures to boost growth, rising oil prices and market anticipating a rate hike in the upcoming FOMC meeting. For the rest of the week, he says the market would take cues from the Fed decision and weekly auction demand. He expects the 10-year benchmark bond yield to trade in a range of 7.05 to 7.15 percent. Well, we have a lot of stock-specific action to track for you. We'll get to that in just a bit. Before the time being, let's run you through our top 10 list. We're looking at Tata Motors, Tata Motors, DVR, LNT, Seat, Amber Enterprises. They are stocks that could be reacting to positive news flow. On the flip side, of SBI Life, Scient, uh, Dixon Tech, Canfin Homes, and SRF. All of them will be reacting to negative news flow.